Nathan's dead, please Minecraft 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 Dad, is this really your intro? <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Nathan's Dad Plays Minecraft. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you watching. So today we are going to add an iron farm to our world. And this is Doc M 77s design. Uh, I think he was the one that figured out first how to get to, uh, iron farms working again in 1.14. And this farm also works in 1.15 which is the version that we are in. So we are pillaring out 20 blocks. Pillaring out. We are, well, yeah, I guess we're going out 20 blocks. And then I'm going four on each direction here. So very important here that you go four on each direction. Now, iron golems will spawn within 16 blocks of a village length and width and five high, according to the wiki. And so I have built this out about 20 blocks, so that way there's no chance of them spawning over there on the platform. And then, again, you're want, going to want to go four in each direction to build your villager cells. It is very important that you go four and not five. If you go five here, then the villagers will drown in the water source. Just, I'm not sure exactly why. Something with the mechanics of the way they sleep and it's too, they're too far away from the zombie. Something, I don't know. But anyway, so four is the number there. And then on the end here, end here we're going to build a little platform that is where we're going to put the little village. And I built it over there. And so I am just going to show you over on this side how I built it. Whoops, it looks like I am one composter short. So anyway, so what you're going to need are three villager workstations. I'm just using composters because they're easy to build. They're just half slabs. Okay, so you're going to put one bed here, go up. You're going to put one bed there and then one bed there. So now right in this open space here is where the water is going to be. Now, as far as your workstations, on the, he on the head of the bed here, you're going to put one over this, one over this. And then in the back there you're going to want to put your third workstation. And I'm just going to go prep for it and then I'll go get another workstation real quick. Okay, so we went and got our other workstation. I also grabbed a bucket of water as well. You're also going to need a bucket of water in the spot between the two furthest beds behind the head of the third bed because this is going to allow the villagers to go up and down and to see the zombie that we are going to place in the trap here. So you're going to put that right there. Now very important where you place this third works, workstation. If you place it up on the same level that the other two are, for some reason the farm does not work. So you actually have to put it one down and then put a block over it so that way the villagers don't jump on there and fall to their death. So I'm going to take out that temporary block right there. So as I was headed to get another water bucket, I noticed that one of the villagers has attempted a jailbreak. Now I was thinking I was going to have to get a boat and trap them and row them over there, but it looks like they will pathfind on their own there. So let me slab this off so that way we don't get any more rogue villagers out there. And, yep, it looks like he has picked up the farming profession over there. And so, yeah, it looks like these guys are going to pathfind on their own. Now, I, um, I've got a water bucket in each of those cells. And now I've got a lava bucket as well because we are going to need to make a kill chamber down at the bottom here for the iron golems. So, hello guy. Oh gosh, you are not a not you are not a uh, I thought I had all the guys I trade with locked up, but it looks like you are one I've already traded with. So, see if I can't get you back over there since you've got the carrot and the potato trade. Now, we do have plenty of villagers as you can see. The villager breeder has been working famously. So, I'm super excited about that. Uh, I've got um 
plenty of villagers. Like I said, they will keep breeding as long as there is a bed for them to go. Oh, hello, buddy. Yep, so let's get you back in here. Thank you very much. And open that up for you so you can head back inside. And we'll put you back in. No more jailbreaks for you, mister. Now, finishing off each of these holding cells here, which the center water block there will constitute the center of the village for each of these. What you're going to do is you're going to want to put a solid block over the foot of the bed closest to where the zombie is going to be and a trap door there. For now, you can fold it down, but once we get all the villagers in their bed, you're going to want to put that up to keep them from wandering around out of the water source there. So we'll do the same thing over on this side over here. Turn around, put it on the foot there, put a trap door, and this finishes off the training cells for the most part. We've got one more step there, but we can do that after we get the villagers in. And next, we are going to put a cobblestone or make a cobblestone pillar like we've done since the very first episode here. So by placing a lot of lava bucket there and then a water bucket on the opposite side, we will generate a cobblestone pillar all the way down to y equals zero. So the best way to get to the bottom of the world, in my opinion, because then you don't have to worry about peeking out of a water, uh, water stream and potentially drowning. Got my water source, we'll put it right there and grab the lava source, put it back in the cobblestone generator and that will generate a cobblestone pillar down. Now it, it was a minute since I put the lava source down and so you do need to give the lava time to go to the bottom of the world. I explained this all in the very first episode getting started. So if you've got any questions about that, I would reference you to that video right there. Pretty easy to do though, not, not really a whole lot to it, and makes getting to the bottom of the world a lot easier. Now since the villagers will pathfind on their own, built a little place over there where I'll put some beds to, to trap them in case they decide they don't want to do it when I want them to do it, and build some fences along the side here, A, so they don't accidentally fall off. If you get two or more of them in an area, sometimes they can push each other. Or more importantly, I don't want them to push me off. So <laughs> put some fences on the side here just so everything is safe and secure and nobody's pushing anybody off the edge into the void because we do not want that. Okay, so I am going to speed up the video at this point for the non-essential parts of the farm, the, the parts where I probably want to show it to you, but you know, it's not going to be anything where you're going to have to rely on that to build. Just because, in other words, this is going to turn into an over an hour video and have to make it into two parts, and nobody wants that, including myself. So, just building a little bottom half slab platform right here to make it easier for the villagers to pathfind to the beds without pushing each other off. And then next we're going, ahead, going to go ahead and work on the spawning area for the iron golems. So, make top half slab, put the cauldron there. And to get the iron, I smelted down all of the chainmail and iron armor and shovels and everything I got from the super mob farm. And so... Um, you're going to want to go up two additional spots from there and you're going to want to put fences all along the outside of this 5x5 five five area and this is where the iron golems are going to spawn. Do not put fence gates where I'm putting them right now. I will realize my mistake here in just a second. But you're actually going to want to put those fence gates towards the village uh, or towards the villager breeder there you can do it the opposite direction as well just not towards either of the villager cells that are here and so tearing these downs right here and then I did make a couple of modification to Doc's design just based on 
some things that I've experienced from other worlds. So I will show you those as well. But now I'm going to dig down here. I'm going to leave that open because hopefully we are going to get some zombies to spawn there when we want them. I do not want them to spawn tonight though, so I'm going to make sure I sleep as soon as it gets dark, build some more fences, and I'll show you why there in just a second. Make me another or make me some carpets because you are going to need those. And then, yep, getting dark, so I'm going to sleep and then head back over to the farm. Now Doc's design has one row of fences on the side and then right here I decided to go with a half slab. I don't think it's entirely necessary but for some reason I was thinking it was and so anyway now that carpet that I just put over the top there is necessary because that changes the way the villagers um, villagers will jump up and down to see. Now one modification I did do is do make this area two fence posts high. Whoops, looks like I'm one short. Let's make another one. Because I have found that the iron golems can bob up and down in the water and make it over to the Uh, on top of the fences in which case then they will not fall and then they will not spawn any more columns it looks like that guy became a leather worker he'll be alright he'll turn into a farmer when we need him to so I will just leave him out there and then as night falls I'm going to try and get a zombie now I do not have any name tags and even if I did I don't have an anvil so I couldn't rename it anyway and you can't name tag something or you can't rename something name tag I've tried that in the past it does not work and so and that is where we are going to get down right there but you can't rename something name tag and so that uh, we're gonna have to get a zombie that can hold something and so I did not put the water in the top platform yet just because I want to see if we can get a zombie to spawn up there and get it to fall into the cauldron. Now it is night in the mob Minecraft world now and so I am going to, oh we got skeleton, let's go ahead and shoot those guys there. Hello buddy, why don't you get down there and I'll push you over to join your friends. See the nice thing about the one wide spot there is that it makes it much easier to push villagers and then killing those skeletons is actually a good thing just because there's some bones oh and we've got a zombie that carried something nice boy that could not have worked out better and so we're going to close him in there and yes and he is able to carry stuff so he will not despawn and let's get you guys over into there and so we have got our zombie now we just need to get a couple more villagers and we will be good to go here so now I can go ahead and make this a space where mobs cannot spawn because once we got our zombie we really don't need any other mobs here and we can go ahead and finish up the farm so what we're going to need on the spawning platform up here is a stream of water that flows down to the edge. Now we've got the fence gates on the one side so that way the water will not flow over. Now iron golems will be able to spawn on this on wa in water. So that's not an issue. That is a valid spawnable space for iron golems. However, the other mobs will not be able to spawn and so this makes a perfect place for the iron golems to spawn where mobs can't spawn and ruin our day. And hello friend, we will put you in with the rest of them. And so yeah, just every once in a while they've just been kind of just randomly pathfinding over here and 
that kind of makes it easier for us as well. And it looks like this guy has taken up the leather worker profession because of the cauldron. Now I will show you in just a second how I was able to get enough iron for a cauldron because you do need seven. And so what I did in the villager was I put or in the in the villager trading hall was I put down a couple of grindstones and I got a guy with that sells iron an iron axe. And so I've been able to get that trade for two to three or one to two emeralds. And so I've just been smelting down that as well as all the chainmail armor and iron armor that I've been getting. So I can have could have enough iron to do this. And I'll show you that in just a second. In the meantime, however, we are going to go ahead and build the kill chamber for the iron golems here and so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build and I build it because I didn't want to have to mess with signposts and water in the water and stuff like that and so I am building this eight long well I guess by the time you count the kill chamber ten ten long and eight plus two plus eight 18 wide and again that's just so the water streams will themselves naturally go where I need to go without me having to interfere with signposts and things like that and I probably didn't need to put that extra row that I just put there but you know oh well it happens and if I try and take it down most of them are going to go in the void anyway so maybe once I get build the, the platform underneath here that won't be such a big deal so but yeah you guys will see this come in come into shape here in just a second and be able to kind of figure out what I'm doing with this now the mechanics that make this farm work are kind of interesting so in order for a villager to spawn an iron golem three of them have to gossip so that's why we've got two cells of three. You really only need one cell to get it to work, but by having two cells at the distance they are, that constitutes two separate villages. And so each of them will gossip, and then you get about, I'm guessing it's twice as many iron golems. I know you get a lot more than if you've just got the one cell. And then you can stack these on top of each other as well. Just make sure they're, I believe they've got to be at least seven higher. I know we've always had better luck building them a little bit further apart than that. And so we would build one and then we'll go probably 15 or 15 or 20 higher and do that. And we've had better luck with that. You know, it doesn't double your spawn rate. It maybe gives you 50% more iron golems. So if you were getting, you know, 10 iron golems in a period of time, then if you build another one you might get 15 and so like I said it's not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio there but the more cells you build the more iron golems you get and so that kind of works well as I was gathering a few more materials I hear the wandering trader so let's see if I can find him and let's see if he's going to give us some spruce saplings where are you buddy oh there you are and not spruce but we do have jungle saplings which are notoriously hard to get so i think i will buy some of those buy as many as i can of those let's see anything else i want there nope i don't see anything else that i need but i am gonna go ahead and get some more emeralds and hopefully he is still here when i get back and i'll be able to buy some additional jungle saplings generally they will sell you up to eight saplings I think eight is the amount for saplings and so I'm going to buy as many of those as I can because there's no telling when I can get fortune but I can go ahead and grow some jungle trees so that will be a nice thing to have so yeah super excited about that wish you'd have had some spruce but you know maybe the next guy will have some spruce and then after that again after you have a wandering trader in your world and you're done with the trades it sounds brutal but it is best to go ahead and dispose of him immediately because the chances of another wandering trader 
spawning do not occur until you actually or until there's actually not one within a certain distance from you and I did buy four puffer fish from the last one that were here wasn't sure if I'll ever actually need them but I was like yeah you know I might want them in a trap or something and so that is that so I did want to show you that on camera and again the wandering trader much more useful in skyblock than he is in regular vanilla minecraft so yep let's go ahead and finish working on this now I've got my what is this this is going to be 8 plus 1 so 9 by 18 platform up here built I thought it's okay to build this with wood since it's all going to be water because again fire tick is turned on on this world and so where I built it with wood is fine if you build the outer edge with wood where there's not going to be water then potentially you could have a stray lightning bolt that just kind of burns it up and then yeah all your iron golems are going to go into the void and so but in the center there where there's going to be water I thought it was okay to build it with wood give it a little bit of a contrast there and so we're going to half slab this to prevent mobs from spawning and you are going to want to build this at least one and a half higher on the outside so the iron golems can't just get up and get out you do want the water streams to carry them into this central area right there so I'm going to go ahead and dump that water right there so that way I can go get another water source and voila another water source has appeared in my inventory off camera <laughs> And again, guys, I'm not using any commands in this world, so any of the off-camera stuff is completely legit. Going to finish building the outside of this. I've, I've decided to go two and a half high instead of one, just because why the heck not. And so, let's see, we're going to put our water source in the corner there, grab this one, and then we're going to just make a row of infinite water sources here. And as you can see, it goes exactly to the end there, so exactly eight down. And then in the corner here, we're going to put a couple of water sources. Go in the other corner over here, put a couple of there. And then we have a two by six area for the iron golems to collect into. And let's go make the kill chamber down here. So you're going to want to go out one more. And then build around this. And so, yeah, funny story. Uh, I decided afterwards not to build this up the way that I have here. And you'll see why in just a second. It's actually going to be quite hilarious what happens to me. So, yep, got a couple of beds here. Just needed two more villagers. And so I'm going to hopefully be able to get them to follow me down here. Come on, buddy. Come to your bed. And come on over there. No. So beds at night is really the easiest way to move villagers other than a boat or a minecart. And so they will normally try and pathfind to the bed at night. Sometimes you do need to break it like I did over there. And now that I've got three villager cell, villagers in this cell, you're going to want to break every single block underneath it. So that way the only place that they have to wake up and jump to is where the water source is. So that way they will jump into the water source as soon as they wake up. Oh, it looks like that guy is wanting to get over there, but the fence is in the way. Oh, there we go. And so I've got these three as well. And so we've got our villagers here. And you're going to want to make sure you turn up that trap door as well so they can't pathfind over the beds and then potentially fall off the edge there. And so I'm going to take all of these blocks away from here. Now, they cannot see the zombies, so... They shouldn't spawn on any iron golems. They may spawn one or two, but the spawning mechanic really requires them to actually see the zombie for it to work. 
on a regular basis so that is a plus there and like I said on in hindsight this was not a good idea in closing this whole thing in but I do have the corner pillar still there and you are going to want to make this exactly three high so a three block drop and I'll show you why here in just a second and I was thinking this didn't matter but yeah it turns out it does and then underneath here we're going to put the collection area so da -da. and we'll go off the side here let's see we want to make these bottom half slabs and we're going to build the collection area similar to what we build up there and probably once we get a little more iron I'm going to make a kill chamber. I'll probably kill these first few iron golems manually. I'm going to leave my crafting bench down here as well because if I get too much iron, I'm going to have to convert it into blocks in order to be able to carry it with me because obviously we do not have shocker boxes yet. But yeah, just going to build a little platform here and probably we'll make this into like a little basement down here so that way I can collect the iron and the flowers and yeah this should work out well ran out of blocks and so I instead of I, I'm getting kinda of sick of peeling up and down up and so I'm gonna build a staircase up now I'm gonna cut out cut out here but if you do wanna see the way that I build these stairs up it's pretty easy and I've done this in both the passive mob farm and the husk farm so easy way to build stairs up so that way you can get up and down without having to worry about ladders which I absolutely abhor or pillaring up and down every time so so now I'm smelting down some of these axes that I have bought from the villager with the grindstone. Pretty sure he's the weaponsmith. And maybe not the weaponsmith, the toolsmith maybe. But yeah, so I am going to need a shield for the next part of this where we are going to get that zombie to go in the cauldron. Zombies do not really pathfind into the cauldron very well. Two sticks will smelt one of these down into an ingot, and of course nine ingots or nine nuggets are going to make an ingot so I've got this one's furnace with sticks in it specifically for this purpose and our ingot is going to be used to make it sh to make a shield and first I'll show you how not to do it because I don't know what I was thinking but I decided that I was going to do it the wrong way first and so <laughs> going to go ahead and make a shield with the first one and then after that I'll show you the correct way to do it. So we are headed out to our zombie here and we need to build a platform around him so that way we can kind of nudge him into the cauldron and the easiest way to get him to go in there is with the shield however do not do it the way I'm getting ready to show you. Um, I forgot how powerful the zombies were and they can push you back pretty far so as you can see I'm pushing him with the shield but he is just not moving and so yeah not possible to really push him more than a block and at this point I realize oh gosh I am screwed here how in the world am I going to get out of here and can't even eat because every time I lower my shield he hits me so, losing durability very quick. Come on, guy, get into the cauldron. Nope, this way is not going to work. And that four hearts now. And I'm thinking, do I want to kill this guy and try and get another zombie? What do I want to do here? I've got 80 levels. Oh, no, 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 no. Tried to eat there. A little bit more food. Come on, guy, get into the cauldron. How do I get out of here without getting him out of here? two hearts left and I died so that is the way to not do it so if you head over here get my try and get my stuff need to go get a pickaxe 
and so I will get my stuff build a little bit better uh, chamber to do this and I'll show you how to do it the correct way and again I do apologize for not showing you more of this on camera this video has just gotten extremely long so as you can see I put half slabs all along the side here I've got him trapped back over the cauldron and whoops okay and so now I've got to get him to follow me back over to the cauldron and if you stay under the half slabs here you can nudge him into the cauldron with a shield he's still gonna hit you but he's not gonna overpower you the way he did before and then once he gets over there put another half slab Ooh, and see we've gotten some iron golems already um, put another half slab over the top of him and then he will not be able to get out so that is the easiest way to get the zombie inside of the cauldron and now he is trapped there we can go ahead and remove all these blocks along the outside and this farm is going to start regular, regularly producing iron columns I believe it is one every 30 seconds per villager cell approximately and the more cells you got the less efficient it is and so the next thing we want to do is to keep the golems from spawning over where the villagers are. Now golems will spawn on very, very many different types of configurations. They'll even spawn on bottom half slabs. However, if you have two bottom half slabs over each other, they will not spawn on that. And so that's what we've done here. And as you can see, I forgot to remove one of the corner fence posts. So that guy right there got stuck but this will keep them from spawning over the villagers and if the villagers see an iron golem then they're less likely to spawn another one so we do want to make sure that they flow off there and again we're going to want to put two rows of bottom half slabs over all of these spawnable spaces here da, da, da and that will keep them from spawning over by the villagers. Now I figured the easiest way to get down here and finish this would be to just jump down and I cannot get to the door. And when I tried to mine the brick, well, I died there and so that was not a fun thing because evidently I accidentally hit an iron golem, which is why I decided to make it open because the rates on this thing are just phenomenal and it is producing a ton of iron golem and I am going to need to get the iron to build the collection system so we're just gonna break all these out get my stuff back and we're just gonna leave this open so and that's why you want to build it three high here so that way you can break out the bottom two and the iron golem still stay trapped inside so Let's go ahead and kill some of these guys and see or and get some of this iron. And I am not able to keep up. They are spawning way faster than I am able to kill them with a bow and arrow. So we're going to have to come up with plan B. Now I do have some slime and I do have some blaze powder. And so with that I'm going to be able to make magma cream. And for magma cream we'll make a magma block. And so I think I'm going to put some magma blocks under here. I think if I've got enough for three, I think that might be sufficient to kill them one in each corner and then on the opposite side. So it looks like I've got 24 slime blocks. So 24 divided by four is six. Oh, it looks like I've got enough for one under each of them. So I can make six magma blocks and then they should just die from these so yeah that'll work out well I'll be able to get enough iron to build the collection system now as I'm doing this you want to make sure that you don't take them all out at once other words the yeah, iron golems are going to escape they cannot fall through a one by one slot though so let's build up to here we'll take these out one at a time and put the magma blocks in there. There, there, there. 
And yes, they are getting hurt. This is working just the way we thought it would. And so let's head back up there and collect some of our iron. And then we'll use this iron to build a uh, hopper minecart system underneath with a couple of tracks. I've got plenty of gold from the super mob farm and yes, it is dispatching these guys pretty quickly. And so, and I've got a stack of iron. So I've reached the iron golem farm achievement. So build this out a little bit here and yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is this is awesome here. So let's build the collection system and then we'll go ahead and end this video. And so with this collection system, what you are going to need is you're going to need uh, two hopper mine carts, six, well, I guess, yeah, I guess six powered rails will be fine. We're going to do four powered rails with two regular rails. Six, six will be fine though. Something to power with. I'm going to just use levers since they're the cheapest way to get redstone power because it's just a piece of cobblestone and a stick. And then you're just going to need to build a platform underneath here and then some hoppers and some chests, obviously. So repurpose some of that iron that we got from earlier. I'm going to put some levers on here and turn them on. Let's see, build this on the other side. Put, the, put our hoppers in the middle. Now, in order to get the poppers to point the way you want, you've got to have something for them to point into. So, you need to have a block there, point it into that. And if you crouch and look at a block, the hopper will head in the direction you're wanting it to head into. So, we're going to crouch and look at that hopper, and then both of those are going in the direction we want. Go ahead and take away those temporary blocks. And then now we are going to put the railing. So I'm just going to use three there. And sometimes you've got to break them to get them to go the way you want. But as you can see, we've got three powered rails. Going to put the hopper mine carts in there. And now the reason that the hopper mine carts are, you have to use those instead of regular hoppers, is because they are actually a little bit higher than a full block. And so they will pick stuff up that falls on the magma blocks or yeah on the magma blocks or on the magma cubes if you do not have the hopper mine carts and just try and put the hoppers on it will not collect the items that are on top of there just because it is a full block and so it cannot get to it so and now the way I like to do my collection systems and I'll get into this when I build an item sorter which I, I really need to do but I like to go in a diagonal because if you do it this way, then the stuff always flows to the bottom. Or if you just go a straight line down, then if you've got stuff in the second chest up, it's going to stay in the second chest up. Whereas this way, it'll automatically flow to the bottom every single time. And so that's the way I like to build my collection system here. Uh, evidently, I'm expecting a lot of iron, so <laughs> put five double chests here. So but the rates on this farm should be pretty phenomenal and so I'm, I'm excited about the amount of iron we've gotten now and wanted to thank you all for watching nathan's dad plays minecraft sorry this is a bit of a long one here but hopefully you learned something uh i i did skip a lot of the video just because of the length of it and how long it took me to actually re record and explain everything so if you do have any questions leave those in the comments and i will do my best to ask them again thank you everybody for watching don't forget to like and subscribe really really helps us out we're trying to still trying to get to 100 subscribers and appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time thanks again bye bye